Hey folks, my name is Nathan Johnston, and welcome to Lecture 6 of Introductory Linear Algebra. Today's lecture is a bit of a turning point for this course, because up until now, we've seen theorems, except all of those theorems that we've seen so far have been sort of, I don't know, straightforward in a sense, or at least intuitive, right? We saw a theorem, for example, that said if you add up two vectors, it doesn't matter the order that you add them up in, right? V plus W is the same as W plus V. Okay, and that wasn't surprising, right? Because the way that you add vectors is you just add a whole bunch of real numbers. And of course you can add real numbers in either order. Okay, similarly, we saw a theorem that said, hey, well, if you wanna compute the length of a scalar times a vector, you could also equivalently compute the length of that vector and then multiply by the absolute value of that scalar, okay? In other words, you can pull scalars out of vector lengths as long as you throw an absolute value around it. And again, that wasn't surprising because we already had this notion that what scalar multiplication does is it just stretches that vector by that scalar amount or reflects it as well if that scalar happens to be negative. Okay, but in today's class, we're gonna introduce two new theorems, the first of which is very, very not intuitive, or at least it's not obvious at all, okay? So when you see this theorem, you are not intended to look at it and say, oh yeah, that's true. And this is the first time that happens in this course. All right, so let's see what this is. This theorem, it really is gonna be new. This tells you something you didn't know before. All right, and it's called the Cauchy-Schwarz inequality. And at a high level, what it is, is it's the best possible relationship between the dot product of two vectors and the lengths of those vectors. It tells you how dot products and lengths sort of interact. All right, so here's what it says. Suppose you've got any vectors in any dimensional space, then what happens is the absolute value of the dot product is always less than or equal to the product of the lengths of those vectors. So for example, you cannot possibly ever find any vectors that have a dot product of eight and their individual norms are each one, okay? Because eight is not less than one times one, right? Okay, so it bounds sort of what types of dot products you can get based on the lengths of those vectors. Okay. That's not obvious, okay? We sort of alluded to this a little bit when we talked about our geometric interpretation of the, the dot product, but still, like, this theorem is not obvious. And where it comes from is also not obvious, okay? So this proof is also going to be sort of our first not obvious proof. All of the proofs that we've done up until this point have been, hey, write down the definition of the thing, then use basic properties, and then you get what you want, and everything just falls out. This proof is very different though. This proof took some work and some ingenuity for people to come up with, okay? And in particular, there's gonna be a step at the beginning of it that's gonna make you go, why on earth are we doing that, okay? And for now at least, don't worry about why we're doing that, okay? Just make sure that you can follow along with the steps to see, oh yeah, that's true based on things we did, and that's true based on things we did, and so on. Make sure that you can follow from step to step to step to see that they're all true statements, even if you don't know right away exactly why we're doing that particular thing. Okay, so let, let's start. Let's start off, and what we're gonna do first, this is the weird step. We're gonna introduce this new vector x, which is defined in this way, okay? So v and w, those are the vectors we care about, but then we're gonna introduce this vector x, which is the length of w times v minus the length of v times w. Okay, and the short answer for why we're gonna introduce that vector x is it's gonna help us. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at this quantity, the length of x squared. Okay, we're gonna compute that quantity or at least write down in a different way. So the length of x squared, we certainly know that that number is bigger than or equal to zero, right? Because lengths are bigger than or equal to zero first off and then while you square it, still bigger than or equal to zero. Okay, but also the length of any vector squared is just equal to the dot product of that vector with itself, right? Just by definition, like the length, if we didn't have the squared up here, it would be this dot product square rooted. Okay, so the squared just gets rid of the square root. Okay, but now I'm gonna substitute in my definition for x. I'm gonna substitute in, well, x is this ugly expression here. So it's this ugly expression dot producted with itself. Okay, and now I'm gonna use, well, I've got all sorts of nice properties of dot products. In particular, whenever I have a parenthesized expression dotted with a parenthesized expression, I can sort of expand that out just like I usually expand out multiplication of parenthesized expressions, okay? Just be careful that your multiplication here now is the dot product. So what you're gonna get is first dotted with first, plus first dotted with second, and so on, plus second dotted with first, and second dotted with second, just sort of all possible pairs dotted with each other. 
So here's first with first, here's first with last, here's last with first, and here's last with last, okay? And be careful that you've got a minus sign on these two cross terms coming from the minus signs inside here. Okay, now I'm gonna try to simplify that a little bit. For example, if I look at this first term here, I have the length of w times v times dotted with the length of w times v. And remember, so length of w, that's just a scalar. I can pull it out in front of the dot product. And then I can pull out another length of w out in front of the dot product. So when I do that, I'm gonna have length of w squared because I pulled two copies of the length of w out in front of the dot product. Okay, and then I'll be left with just v dotted with v. Okay, and again, a vector dotted with itself, well, that's just the length of that vector squared. So we get length of v squared as well. This dot product out front here, that's just equal to length of w squared times length of v squared. Okay, and the last dot product simplifies in a very similar way, right? We get a length of v, a length of v, so that gives me a length of v squared, and then a w dotted with w, well, that's length of w squared. All right, and then the two cross terms don't simplify down quite as nicely, but still not too bad. We got a length of w and a length of v pulling out in front, and then we're left with a v dotted with w, and we can't really simplify that at all. v dotted with w just is v dotted with w, and similarly for the other cross term, we're gonna have a w dotted with v that we can't simplify, but we can pull the length of v and length of w out in front. All right, and now some of these terms are equal to each other, so we can combine things and simplify a little bit further. Length of w squared times length of v squared? Ah, well, that's exactly what this is. I mean, the, the two things you're multiplying are written in the opposite order, but that doesn't matter. They're real numbers, right? You can commute them past each other. These are both just equal to length of v times length of w squared. So you combine them and you get two of that term. Okay, and similarly, these two cross terms are equal to each other as well. They each have a length of v times a length of w times a v dot w. Remember the dot product is commutative. v dot w is the same as w dot v. All right, so we can combine those two cross terms into two times the cross term. Great, so what this tells us is it tells us this expression over here, well, it's equal to all of these other expressions. In particular, it's equal to this length squared. So this expression must be bigger than or equal to zero. This expression here is bigger than or equal to zero. And that, that's the Cauchy-Schwarz inequality actually, okay? After we simplify and rearrange things a little bit, that'll give us the Cauchy-Schwarz inequality. So let's see how this works. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take that expression that I just wrote down. Okay, we know this thing is bigger than or equal to zero. We're gonna divide by two first, because that has no bearing on being bigger than or equal to zero. And then we're gonna move this term over to the other side so that it becomes positive. Okay, and after we do those two things, what we've got is this inequality here, right? This length of v squared times length of w squared, that's coming from here. We divided away the two. And then length of v times length of w times the dot product, well, that's coming from here. We moved it to the other side and divided by two. All right, so after we divide by two and rearrange, we get that expression there. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna cancel out some things, right? I've got a length of v in both sides and I've got a length of w on both sides. So I'm gonna cancel out those two common terms. And when I do that, I'm gonna have just a length of, or sorry, I'm just gonna have the dot product of v with w on the left. And I'm gonna have just one copy of the length of v and the length of w on the right. The squareds go away, okay? And that, I mean, that's the Cauchy-Schwarz inequality. Almost, okay? We've sort of proved 99% of the Cauchy-Schwarz inequality there. I sort of cheated a little bit in two ways. So maybe, maybe this is a good spot to pause the video and think if you can figure out what are the two different things that I've cheated on in this proof. There are two things I glossed over. They're fairly minor details, but they're still things that we have to address. Okay, so there are two technicalities that we glossed over. They're easy to patch up, but still we do have to patch them up. The first thing that we have to patch up is, well, what if the length of V or the length of W is zero, right? Because to go from this step up here down to the step below it, what I did was I divided by the length of V and I divided by the length of W to cancel these squares and this term on the left. But if either of those lengths is zero, I can't do that division. Okay, so how do I fix that up? Well, the way that I fix that up is I just consider these two cases separately, okay? So this argument works fine as long as all the lengths are non-zero. And if the lengths are zero, then I just notice that, hey, yeah, if the lengths are zero, then this inequality is trivial, right? Because if the lengths are zero, then the vector is zero. 
And then this inequality is just going to be saying, oh, well, zero is less than or equal to zero. And that's true. Okay, so the Cauchy-Schwarz inequality is still true in that case. If either of the vectors is a zero vector, yeah, it's just saying that zero is less than or equal to zero, which is true. So it's fine in that case. All right, but you do have to consider that separate case when the lengths or the vectors are zero. All right, and the other technicality is, well, in the original statement of the Cauchy-Schwarz inequality, I did not have just the dot product of V with W is less than the product of the lengths. I had an absolute value here. I had the absolute value of the dot product of u with w is less than the product of the lengths. So where did that absolute value go? I've got to sort of deal with that as well. How do I get that absolute value in there? Okay, and the thing to notice here is that, well, the absolute value of some real number is less than or equal to some positive quantity if and only if plus or minus that real number is less than or equal to the quantity on the right. Okay, so here I showed that plus the dot product is less than or equal to the quantity. I also need to show that negative of the dot product, so negative v dot w is less than or equal to this product over here on the right, okay? And fortunately, we don't need to do too much extra work to show that that's true. If you wanna get a negative over here with the same right-hand side, you can just replace all of the w's by minus w's, or all of the v's by minus v's, doesn't matter either way, okay? If I replace all of the w's by minus w's, then what happens is, well, I can pull the minus sign out in front on the left, and I'll get minus v dot w, and on the right, the length of minus w is just equal to the length of w itself, okay? So nothing changes on the right. So I get the same upper bound, so then I can slap absolute values on and I'm done. Okay, so again, I'm sort of glossing over that and not going into great detail just because it's a minor technicality. I'm just pointing out that yes, it is something that you can deal with. Okay, so the point of that proof, again, like your focus at this point in the course should be making sure that you can follow the steps in that proof. Don't worry about if you could come up with that proof. Okay, because that's not expected of you at this point, okay? There's sort of this magic step at the start where we said, oh, hey, let's let x be this and then consider this quantity over here, this inequality on the left. Why did people do that? Because people stared at this problem for a really long time and then they finally found a method that actually worked. Okay, that's not something that's expected of you yet. All right, well, fine, we got the proof done. We know that the theorem's true. Let's do, do a quick example to sort of highlight the types of things that we can do with Cauchy-Schwartz, okay? We're gonna do tons of things with Cauchy-Schwartz, but let's just do a couple of quick numerical examples to try and make it seem a bit more intuitive. All right, so the first thing that we can do with Cauchy-Schwartz inequality is we can answer questions about whether or not there exist vectors with certain length and dot product pairs, okay? And I mean, this is sort of an artificial question, but I find that it helps building intuition. Okay, so for example, do there exist vectors in two-dimensional space? Turns out dimension isn't gonna matter, but for now in two-dimensional space, do there exist vectors that have length two, length three, and dot product equal to seven? Okay, and very quickly, you should be able to see that no, that can't possibly happen. There's a problem here because if we use the Cauchy-Schwartz inequality, well, Cauchy-Schwartz inequality says the dot product is gonna be less than or equal to the product of the lengths, what is the dot product though? Well, the dot product is seven, just copying it down from up above. And what is the product of the lengths? Well, it's two times three, which is six. Okay, so the Cauchy-Schwartz inequality, if these vectors existed, would then tell us that seven is less than or equal to six, which is of course a load of crap. So no, no, those vectors, they don't exist. There are no vectors that have length two and three and dot product equal to seven. All right, well, how about we tweak it up a little bit? How about we change it? Do there instead exist vectors v and w such that their lengths are two and three, and this time their dot product is five? Okay, and this, this somehow doesn't seem as wrong, right? Because I mean, all that's gonna change is we're gonna have a five on the left-hand side here now instead of a seven. And yeah, five is less than or equal to six, so that's okay, Cauchy-Schwartz is not violated. And it turns out whenever Cauchy-Schwartz is not violated, yeah, you can find vectors that do that. You can find vectors with those particular length and dot product combinations, okay? So let's sort of see how you do that, okay? How can we find vectors that have these properties here? Well, sort of focus on one piece at a time. I'm gonna first construct a vector V that has the right length, okay? It turns out you have a lot of freedom here. There are actually lots of vectors V and W with these properties. So I'm just gonna construct sort of the simplest vector that I can, V, that has the right length. How about the vector two, zero? That certainly has length two. All right, so great. This first part is satisfied, V has the right length. Let's focus on the dot product next. Let's find a vector W 
that has dot product equal to five when I dot it with V here. Okay, well, to make that dot product equal to five, I just have to throw five halves into the first entry of W. And I haven't even specified the second entry of W yet because whatever it is, it's gonna multiply by zero when I do the dot product. Okay, so no matter what I put in this entry on the right-hand side of W, it'll have dot product equal to five with V. Okay, so now the second, this, this first part and the second part are both satisfied. Okay, and then the last thing I need to do is I need to fill in the second entry of W so that the length of W is right, and then that'll give me all three pieces of information. So I just need to fill in whatever number I can here to make the length of W actually equal to three. And then that's just a little bit of a calculation. It turns out root 11 divided by two works, right? Because then, I mean, if you take these entries, square them, add them up, and then square root at the end of the day, you'll find out that you get a length of three. All right, so those two vectors work. They have the desired length and dot product combinations. Okay, so the Cauchy-Schwarz inequality, really, it's sort of the best relationship between the dot product and the lengths that exist. Whenever the Cauchy-Schwarz inequality is satisfied, you can find vectors with those properties. And whenever it's not satisfied, you can't find vectors with those properties. All right. So for our purposes, though, the reason for introducing the Cauchy-Schwarz inequality is it's going to help us prove lots of other theorems throughout this course. Okay, and the first theorem that it's going to help us prove is something called the triangle inequality. And what it is, is it's the statement that the length of a sum of two vectors is always less than or equal to the sum of their individual lengths. Okay, so first off, one thing I really, really, really want to emphasize here is students, sometimes they want to throw an equality here. Sometimes they want to say that the length of a sum of two vectors is equal to the sum of the lengths, and that's not true. This is the best you can do, okay? You can say that it's less than or equal to. You cannot say that it's equal to. Okay, and when we think about it geometrically, that'll be a bit more clear. What is this theorem saying geometrically? What, like, what is this inequality? Well, the reason that's called the triangle inequality is because the picture associated with this theorem is a triangle, right? If I draw these two vectors v and w head to tail, then remember the sum of them, right? v plus w is the vector that goes from the tail of v all the way to the head of w. It's the other side of that triangle, right? Then what this theorem is saying is that the length of this vector is never bigger than this length plus this length, okay? And that is hopefully a little bit more intuitive. And hopefully now you believe, yeah, okay, you should not have equality there, right? The length of this vector doesn't equal the length of these other two vectors added up because you sort of have this bend here, right? Like this distance here is shorter than this distance plus this distance. Okay, and that's really another way of thinking about this theorem. One way of interpreting this theorem is as saying that the shortest path between two points is a straight line. Okay, certainly this is something that you know and something that you've known for years and years and years, but you've probably never actually proved it up until now. So this is our first mathematical proof of the statement that the shortest path between two points is a straight line. Like if you, if you wanna get from the origin up to this point up here, well, going that path, that's not optimal because just going directly there is shorter. That's what this inequality says. Okay, well, Let's, let's prove this and maybe state a little bit more formally too, okay? So suppose you've got any two vectors in n-dimensional space. Okay, that's something that we sort of don't get from our picture up above. In the picture up above, I drew it in two dimensions, but it's true in n dimensions, okay? No matter what your dimension is, this theorem's still true. Then what the theorem says is, well, exactly what we wrote down before. The length of a sum is less than or equal to the sum of the lengths. All right, so how do we prove this theorem? Again, it's a little tricky, but hopefully more intuitive than the Cauchy-Schwarz inequality at least, okay? So here's what we do. We start off with the length that we care about, the length of V plus W, and I'm gonna square it just to get rid of the square roots that would be all throughout the proof, okay? It doesn't actually matter. You don't have to square it. It just makes the proof cleaner. All right, so I'm gonna start off with the length that we care about squared, and when I do that, remember length of a vector squared is equal to the dot product with itself. So this is V plus W dotted with V plus W, okay? And again, we have nice properties of the dot product so we can expand this out using like our foil or whatever. We've talked about this property before. You just do first dot product with first plus first dot product with second and so on. And you end up getting this expression here, right? This V dot V and a W dot W gives you this last term and then two cross terms that are equal to each other, okay? All right, now, 
What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try simplify this and turn everything back into norms now, okay? Or sorry, lengths now, okay? So v dot v, that's just the length of v squared, and w dot w, that's the length of w squared. This dot product in the middle though, that is not a length, okay? There doesn't seem to be an obvious way to turn that into a length, okay? Because in general, I mean, that's not equal to anything involving the lengths of v and w, but, Thanks to the Cauchy-Schwarz inequality, we do know that this dot product in the middle is less than or equal to this product of lengths down here. So that's our way of turning the dot product into something just involving lengths. We use the Cauchy-Schwarz inequality, except the trade-off is we don't have equals anymore on the left, we just have less than or equal to, because that's what the Cauchy-Schwarz inequality says. It's dot product is less than product of lengths. Okay, but the nice thing is now, this expression here, now we can factor that, okay? This over here, I mean, here's length, here's a length, here's a length, here's a length. I claim that's just equal to this expression here, the length of V plus the length of W all squared. Okay, and this is something that you know. I mean, maybe the notation and everything is still new to you, but like if you ever have a real number plus a real number all squared, well, like how do you expand that out? Well, it's the first number squared plus two times the cross term, plus the second number squared. That's exactly what's going on here, right? These lengths, those are all just real numbers. So you can use all of your standard real number tricks on them, okay? And then we're done, right? That tells us that, hey, this quantity squared is less than or equal to this quantity squared. So if you just take the square roots of both sides now, you get exactly the inequality that we want. You get length of V plus W is less than or equal to length of V plus length of W. All right, so that's our first application of the Cauchy-Schwarz inequality, it let us prove this theorem here, okay, this, this triangle inequality. And I mean, it's maybe a worthwhile exercise, try to go through and prove this inequality directly, like write down the definition of the length of V plus W and the length of V and the length of W, and try to show this inequality directly. And I can pretty much guarantee you will get stuck, okay? If you try to prove things directly from the definition, this is actually extraordinarily hard. So the Cauchy-Schwarz inequality, like it sort of gets us around that hard. It sort of does the hard step in this proof for us. Okay, anyway, so that's enough about the Cauchy-Schwarz and triangle inequality for today. In the next lecture, we're gonna see another application of the Cauchy-Schwarz inequality, and that's gonna be, it lets us define the angle between vectors in arbitrary dimensional uh, spaces as well. So I'll see you next class for that.